any names. I'm not gonna mention. Guess. I'm not gonna mention any names. I'm not gonna mention any Microsofts. But anyway, uh, regardless, we're, <laughs> let's we're, get into this. First we're gonna match. forget about that for now. Yeah, we're gonna get forget about that for now. And get into our other side of Winter Semis, which is Panda Bear versus Tyroy. This is a set that has been kind of frequent in the upper brackets here at Ignition. Yeah, it's been seen a million times. It's an Ignition yeah. classic at this point. Tyroy uh, usually ends up taking it. I believe Panda Bear has a couple sets on him, but the ratio, I believe, is highly skewed in Tyroy's favor. Yeah. This matchup is rough and villager. It's, oh, yeah. It's one of those matchups where, on paper, if all, like a lot of people say, well, if you're villager and you know how to space out your projectiles, you can just run away. But the problem yeah, you is, can just keep her out, etc. Bayonetta still has some zone breaking techniques that are just that just overwhelm villager at points, and it's oh, yeah. a matter of if you get into a percent like this. All Bayonetta really needs to do is just touch you once, and then she's sitting pretty in advantage state for a pretty long time. I think one of the bigger determining factors here is that a Villager definitely plays like the long game. He plays chip damage a lot of the time. If Bayonetta gets one opening, even on a floatier, harder to combo character like Villager, she can still get a lot of damage off. It's the sort of thing where when she gets a hit, she honestly just runs it. She takes yeah. that lead and can hold it for a very long time, because her defensive tools are by no means anywhere. <laughs> they're just, they're incredible. Villagers are as well, though. Yeah, and and the, and the problem with the chip damage too is, over time, yes, you can get that, you can rack up that damage over time. But the problem is, once she gets that point, rage then becomes a factor. Oh my lord! <laughs> <laughs> See, that rarely happens, but it happens sometimes when you get the dare extended on some of the different hitboxes because villager will be caught in that little spike animation for a little bit longer. While Bayo herself is actually, you know, still lingering a little bit from the other hitbox. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a funny interaction. I mean, I, I remember looking up the, the actual uh, visualization of the hitboxes, and I remember seeing that there. It, it's, it can... It, it's pretty big. It's, pr it's pretty br it's pretty big, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've seen Tyra just kind of keeping Panda Bear off the level for the entirety of this match here. Panda Bear's been getting, like, a couple little cute bullet pockets in, but it doesn't do very much damage even if yeah. he does hit it. Yeah, it, the problem is once Panda gets close enough, Tyra just starts to get offense going, and then once it's by the ledge... Tyroy has the ledge trapping down and off stage once again. He knows how to chase Panda without committing too hard. Oh yeah. And getting into an unsafe spot. He's playing around like the back airs a villager can do off stage very well. And at the same time, I've seen him use like Dare in a very interesting way. I've never seen a Bayo use the like the balloons to extend off their dare and make the hitbox last for so much longer. It's yeah. very good because of how strong the move actually is. Yeah, it, it shows how good that uh, it shows how good Tyro is spacing all of his moves too. Oh like, yeah, you, you need to have some Just precise spacing. Excellent. Yeah, you need to have some precise zoning for that. Yeah, we see Panda getting a little bit of room to play around his do his own game here, but at the same time, Tyro is kind of content to sit back at this point. Yeah. He, uh, he's not really risking much as long as he's not putting himself in spots where he's like susceptible to getting hit by the bowling balls or the back throw, you know, the early kill options. That's an error. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be it. Yeah, there are a couple of moments where Panda was hanging back and being patient, but the problem is, is that the, in those moments where you think you have the window, you still got to, you know, show, you get, still got to show nerves of steel. Like, you can't, you can't press you. You can't press forward at all if you are in disadvantage, and that's the main problem. Yeah. I feel like it's very hard for Villager at the same time yeah. as well because Villager mostly has ranged options. Like, otherwise, it's up close. Like Nair is a very good move. It's frame four, three, something like that. Yeah. Very good for combo breaking, but as an approach tool, especially against Bayo, it's not very good. Especially considering it's so easy to wish time. Yeah, that, that's the thing that I've been seeing Tyroy kind of adapt into his playstyle whenever he does face Panda is. He's been utilizing that uh, invulnerable un invuln that he gets off of Witch Time, and utilizing it to kind of also get around these projectiles. It's it's in it's insane. Speaking of projectiles, we're on Lilat, so everybody's strapping. This match yeah. could be it could take a while. Yeah, I I've been hearing a lot around uh, the Bayo camp that this is kind of universe. This dead. That's yeah, dead, yep. yeah, that's gonna be Damn. Uh, heels on face. See, that's what I was talking about with the Nair being so easy to wish time. And a second Witch Time. Oh, this is dangerous. Okay. No, okay, he falls out of it. Yeah, Tyro tried to go for the fair extension, potentially catch SDI up or down and really just extend the combo and get a little more damage. But Panda's SDI getting him out of that. It was just, it's so scary there because the reason Panda got hit was he was trying to be aggressive at a disadvantage, which we were talking about, is not very great as Villager in this match particularly, just because Bayo's range is so much better. On ledge, another oh witch Lord. time. Tyra's That's gonna be. Oh no, just barely out of range for the backer to extend on that combo. Tyra's doing such a good job just catching him on all these offensive options. It feels like every single time, or almost every time, Panda's gone for like 
an aggressive move out of pressure or in an advantage state in this game, he's gotten witch time for it. And it hurts too. Like, he lost the stock for him. He's at 100% after just two witch times. Yeah, Tyra's definitely checking to see if he's pressing buttons at the wrong time. Oh, yeah. And he's just kind of falling for it. Because it's, it's hard too, because Villager needs to make something happen here. Otherwise, he's just going to have to sit back and let Bayo have this lead. But it's so hard to do so safely. Like, he can't just keep Ooh, it with the projectiles. Pivot grab, that's huge. That probably might be it on this yeah. edge guard, and that's going to be it. Yeah. So, Tyra with the two game lead. Going to Lilat on that second game, I don't know, because I've been hearing from a lot of Bayos that I think Lilat is considered by a, many, I I think it's almost universal at this point, that Lilat maybe her best stage? Not her best, but definitely one of the better stages. I feel like Triplatch is still stronger overall. It was strange to see Panda Bear counterpick there, though, because I don't understand what Villager would really get off of it, aside from getting some you know, bowling balls off platforms because of how low they are. Yeah. You can catch them a little more off guard, but at the same time, I mean, the there's, problem is, there's still less... the, yeah, the tilting and all that, it gives Bayo so much control from just one side of the stage. That was she... a factor in that game, but what I was noticing more was the fact that because Lilat has smaller, lower blast zones, when Panda Bear was off stage, he was just a little more vulnerable. He didn't have nearly as much room to play with, and it was easier for Tyra to actually just cover more space because there was just less of it in general. Especially when, oh my god, uh, he's not the dead. Very, the very end of that, no. and Panda getting out of that, but still. I was thinking we might see Tyra go for a dare there, but All at right. the same time it wouldn't kill. I think now Panda is starting to send a message. He's He wants nothing to do with Tyra in neutral. He's now starting to play the super defensive game. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Panda's player right now, but it's just like, he isn't changing up his game plan from what I can tell. Good legend to get back on the stage, but at the same time, he's consistently just keeping himself in the corner here, and every time he gets put off stage, that's where most of the damage is coming in. It's not really showing in this game quite yet, but I feel like if he keeps up with his game plan for too long, it's just going to make itself even more apparent. Okay. Either that, or if you make mistakes like that dash attack on platform not connecting, that's going to lead to jump up fair, and that's a combo starter, so... What's really strange to see is how... Panaverse is sort of backing off every time Tyra is off stage at this point. He was pressing for the bowling balls and they weren't really working, but at the same time, there are safer options you can go for. You know, plant the tree maybe. It's just, it's strange to see Villager of all characters shying away from ledge trapping. <laughs> yeah, it, it's insane. And on the same foot, you also see Tyra being oh a little bit more aggressive. Wait, what did it connect with? It extended on the balloons. They linger for oh, a little while, yeah, even I, after I, they I, visually disappear. I that's did not bad. see the balloons, so. Yeah, and wow. that's a dead Villager. Yeah. Tyra is in at 65%. Hanover didn't air dodge up there. He popped out of the up B, which allowed Tari to get that early up air there. He potentially could have lived the up air with a little bit better DI, but I feel like he didn't expect it, which is like the big defining moment there. So Panda actually starting to pick up on the witch time. Uh, oh, oh, you man. know, he's, as I say he's that. He's not dead, but it's so much damage. Oh, the ADK extending on the balloons, though. It's so good. Like, it allows him to extend the combo, and he can react because of the different hits. That was a total of just about 50% off stage on that entire string. That was insane. This is what I've been saying. Ooh, but with good air dodge read, it's almost taking the stack there, but not quite high enough percent, especially on this battlefield with such big glass outs. Uh, it's, I don't understand quite why Panda's going off stage to edge guard or ledge trap. I feel like, I guess, just plant the tree, be a little bit safer on stage. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that Panda likes to do for a lot of matchups where he's he's proficient off stage, where it's. He usually is very good at trying, but at this point, it's just kind of redundant at this point as Tyroy cleans it up 3 0 pretty convincingly. Yeah. I'm Not a whole lot of problems in that match. It was just. Uh, it was pretty convincing. I'm not sure, but from the looks of things, it looked as if Panda had given up a little bit early.